Welcome to another edition of DX Engineering videos. We're here at DX Engineering World Headquarters in Talmadge, Ohio, and today we have Neil Rapp in. Neil, how yeah, are you? Good to see you. Just in the area and thought I'd drop in and say hello. Well, we wanted to take this uh, advantage of your dropping in to uh, get to know you a little better and some of the viewers out there might not know the Neil Rapp story. So why don't you tell us, how did you get involved mm -hmm. in amateur radio? Well, when I was five years old, my dad um, pulled a coat oscillator out of the closet. Mm -hmm. um, a doctor had given him a box of old electronic stuff. And back in high school, my dad took vocational electronics and became an electronic technician. And um, so he got out the box and started playing around with the coat oscillator. And of course, I had to know what that was. It made beeping sounds. So. I uh, had to, you know, get the key and start tapping out and making beeps mm -hmm. and everything. And so dad saw that there was a non-credit um, amateur radio class at our local community college. And um, it said that you had to be 13 years old mm -hmm. or above. All right. So he asked about taking the class. He never did get his license in high school, but he was always interested and he thought now would be a good time to do it. So. Um, he decided that he was going to go and he said, can I bring my five-year-old son along? He'll be quiet. He'll sit. He behaves really well. Um, you know, he won't cause any problems, but can I just bring him just to sit with me through the class? And they said, well, you know, normally we don't do that, but you know, if there's a problem, then we're going to have to deal with it. But as long as there's no problem, that, that, that's fine. There was, a, mm -hmm. there was a, a girl that I believe was 11 at the time, and they said, yeah, okay, that's close enough. We'll, we'll do that. So um, dad took his notebook. I took my notebook. You know, dad had his pen. I had my pen. You know, we sat there and did that. And so dad's sitting there copying Morse code and... I'm sitting there copying Morse code and everybody's kind of looking around going, wait a minute, this five-year-old kid's copying Morse code better than a lot of us. And right, right. So, so that's how I got started. So the first time I took the test, uh, I, you were supposed to get 25 characters in a row without right. missing. I got 23. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of disappointed. Um, so the next time I got 104. Nice. So, so you were on your way. And how old were you it. when you got your first license? Five years old. You were five, five years, years old when I got my novice. So you were the youngest uh, ham yeah. ever at that point. I was point. the youngest ham in the world at the time. Uh, there's been three or four more that have beaten that record since. Since then. Now, um, and mm -hmm. what was your first call sign? Um, I had one of the N calls. So it's the same call sign, but with the N. So WN9VPG. Okay. And then, my call. of course, when you upgraded, it went to W. Yeah. It actually turned to WB9VPG about a month before I upgraded because that's when the FCC did away with the N calls. Right. Um, so I actually got the new call sign right before um, I got my technician upgrade at, at six. Now, did your father get licensed at the same so time? So we got licensed at the same time, and our call signs are about, well, his is WB9UKG. So, mm -hmm. you know, Everybody in the class, we had UKA, UKB, UKC, right. UKD, UKE. F, I don't know what happened with F. Uh, and, and G and H. Right. Uh, we're all out of that group. And so mine was, was a lot later. Well, I had printed my name on my 610 form. Mm -hmm. It was 610 at the time. Now it's right. 605. But um, I had printed it rather than signed it because I didn't know cursive at that point. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and so the FCC dismissed the, the application. Oh. So uh, once we figured that out, I filled out another one and dad held my hand while I signed the, the form and then I, I took the, the novice exam and passed. So we got it practically the same time. He got his a few months earlier because of this paperwork snafu. <laughs> but Now let's fast yeah. forward a little bit, Neil, uh, to the world of the internet now which uh, mm -hmm. you have uh, embraced and you have a very active uh, amateur radio club uh, mm -hmm. that you are uh, are working with uh, and tell us just a little bit about the amateur radio club uh, that, at your high school. Sure. Um, I, I started out um, teaching chemistry out, out of college and uh, started up a ham radio club at the school I was at and when I moved to Bloomington um, did the same thing but we actually found it was um, 
it had actually existed a couple of times before. We actually found pictures back in the 40s mm -hmm. uh, of when they had to be off for World War II for a year. Um, but uh, the club ha hadn't been active in probably 20 years. So you got it I got all there. Going so again. I got it all started again. We applied for a grant with the Education and Technology Program at ARL, uh -huh. got a station set up. Good, good. And it's just taken off. Yeah. It, it's just grown How and grown and grown. How many kids are involved in it? Um, we usually keep around 12 actively involved. Good. Last year it went to 25. Nice. Uh, which is a great problem to have, but when we only have one full station, you know, one antenna set up, and, and right. we, we do have a couple of radios, so mm -hmm. that way we do have somebody listening around the band sometimes. Um, and then we have a logger, so we can keep three or four kids going the rest, you know, at how, once. How many uh, of the kids actually have gotten licenses? Um, I think total in the... 12 years or so, we're, we're running around 78 kids 78 that, have, have, uh, have gotten, that have licensed that, and several of them have upgraded. That's that's very nice. And I mean, that's a credit to you and your dedication, not only to the hobby, but also to these kids to give them a lifelong hobby that they can put on their resume and uh, and maybe make yeah. a, a, a world of difference. Now, mm -hmm. so you recently just got involved with podcasts. I so uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I, I got into commercial radio when I was in college. It was a college job. Uh, mm -hmm. It was part time. Um, I did have my own sports show once a week and, and got involved in um, a lot of sports announcing and live mm -hmm. sports announcing. And I did a little bit of broadcast sports announcing. And I always wanted to do talk radio. That was the one thing I always wanted to do. And that was not popular at that mm -hmm. point and and the, I lived in a small town and there just wasn't any talk radio in that mm -hmm. town at all so I really didn't have a chance to do it well I was off driving some I can't even remember where I was driving but it was over the holidays and I heard this ad for this uh, service that would stream live broadcasts mm -hmm. Um, and would interface with Skype and so mm -hmm. everything was kind of set up and, I, and I'd been watching Ham Nation and talking to Don Wilbanks and talking to Christian Kudnick that does the 100 watts mm -hmm. and a wire and and they kind of got me going back for okay broadcasting didn't make a whole lot of money but it was a whole lot of fun this is a chance to do Gotta the do talk that. radio. So how many so shows? So I tried have you done? it. So we're uh, actually uh, doing number twenty-four tomorrow. Nice. Yeah. So it, it, it's taken off, and I'm I'm sure the future is bright. There's a lot of a lot of folks out there, and they all have a unique story. Yes, and and the one thing that that I wanted to do. Uh, with the show, and, and it's, it's one of the biggest challenges right now, is I wanted to show where people would call in. Mm -hmm. Just the regular, plain old talk radio right. show, but the topic is ham radio. Yeah. And so we try to get people to call in or tweet questions or ask questions. And so what I try to do is, is get some of the people, some of the experts, some of the people that I've networked with over the years yep. and get them on and give people a chance to ask questions of those guests. Very, very and cool. And so that's what we're trying to do. That's a little bit different from, from some of the others. There's some great, great podcasts sure. out there. Um, but that's kind of our slant on it is, is to do that. And it's been a lot of fun. And, and I can do it from, you know, live from home. And uh, um, it, it's just been, uh, been really fun. Well, that's great. Neil, we really appreciate uh, you taking some time to speak to us today, and uh, we look forward to future successes, not only with your podcast, but also with the uh, Bloomington South High School and your amateur radio club there. Thanks oh, for thank all you, you very do. Much. And 73. That's, that's a wrap for. Yep, that's a wrap. <laughs> for here at DX Engineering, thanks for watching our program here today. 73.